okay we use these le letters to name lines because how else would we refer to them right so we uh, choose some letters and we name their ends or their points so this can be point a this can be point b this can be point c and this is point d right so we can say that line ab is crossing line cd at right angles and with the help of a protractor we can double check whether this is true uh, kindly mute yourselves okay let me mute okay so by keeping the protractor okay we can confirm whether these two lines are really crossing at 90 degrees and we can see that yes they are okay and then i also mentioned in the chapter of angles that perpendicular uh, angle is denoted by this symbol this rectangular or square box uh, symbol or half of a square now this is simple by looking at it i mean by looking at the two lines we can easily see that this is l shape so you know this is right angle remember we did in the angles chapter but what about these two now sorry for the crooked lines can you pull this for me yes thank you like for example this is one line okay and then this is another line and also notice the reason why i use a boxed box page for explanations is you know so that you can understand it easily now remember this one square is a perfect square perfect square meaning all the sides are of equal length okay okay so now let me see if the two lines are crossing at 90 degrees okay. keep it here right. yes both the lines are exactly at 90 degrees so you know at the outset they might look diagonal you know like they're crossing each other but because they are crossing the two uh, opposite corners of a square such lines are also right angles to each other such lines are also right angles to each other now what did i just say i said that any two lines for example this is one corner of the square this is another corner of the square right this is third corner of the square and this is the fourth corner of the square now if i draw lines and join the opposite corners this is one line and then this is another line if the lines are passing through the corners of the squares opposite corners of the squares they will also cross each other at 90 degrees this is what i said okay did you understand so because these two lines are touching the opposite corners of the square yes opposite corners of the square and this other line is also touching the opposite corners of the square so these two lines will cross each other at exactly 90 degrees so we can we can call them perpendicular right now after we have recognized what perpendicular lines are lines that cross each other at right angles let us do uh, one question from your book and that is question number four on page 109 i chose this question because i thought that you know maybe a few students are having problem with this question now what is this question asking us look at these letters of the alphabet how many pairs of perpendicular lines are there in each of them now i hope all of you know the meaning of the word perpendicular it's just a fancy name it's just a you know it's just a fancy name for right angle it just means right angle so no need to get scared by this big you know uh, lengthy word perpendicular it just means right angle okay now i drew a big e okay because i want to find out the pairs of perpendicular lines i want to find out the pairs of perpendicular lines in this letter e so i drew a big e okay 
I named each of the corners with a letter, any letter, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so that it's easier for me to name the lines, right? Now let's uh, name the pairs of lines which are perpendicular. Okay, and you guys will help me out. First line is, let's say, AB. Okay, so AB is perpendicular to, what is AB perpendicular to? Who will, who wants to answer? Okay, for what? Yes, for what? AB is perpendicular to? It is a perpendicular to. Yes. A and E. A E. Yes. Good job. Can I can I even call it A C? Can I say that A B is perpendicular to A C? Can I can I say that? Yes. Yes. Also A C. Yeah, so AC is a part of AE. AC is this. AE is the whole line. Okay, so AB is perpendicular to AE, which is the same as saying AC. Okay, so, uh, but because AC is a part of AE, I'm not counting it. Well, you can if you want to, but I'm not counting it, right? So AB is perpendicular to AE, right? What do I mean by perpendicular? Hold this camera for me. What I mean by, what do I mean by perpendicular? Meaning that if I extend this AE up and I extend this AB on the left side, I can see that this AB line is crossing AE exactly at right angles. Exactly at right angles. So therefore, AB is perpendicular to AE. AB is perpendicular to AB. Now let's talk about CD. Now I'm ex extending CD and CD is crossing, oh sorry. Oh, yeah. So CD is now crossing AE. CD is now crossing AE. At which angle? Sara, uh, we are on page 109 and I'm not following the book. Okay, I'm just giving you uh, the concept of perpendicular and parallel lines. I just took this question out from page 109 of, of the textbook. Question number four. Name the pairs of perpendicular lines in each of these letters, right? Okay. Okay, Harim, tell me. I will now consider CD. What is CD perpendicular to? Okay. Let's see. Let me unmute you. Yes. Okay, Harim. Yes, you're unmuted, Harim. Now tell me, CD is perpendicular to? CD is perpendicular to E, E, and A. A, E. Right. Well, you can call it E, A as well. You can call it E, e A as well. It would be perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me write E, A. E, A is also fine. Right. Okay. You can name the line anyway. Okay. A, E, E, A, C, D, D, C. Same thing. B, A, A, B, F, E, E, F. Same thing. Okay, Harim, you will continue with me. What about EF? EF is perpendicular to? Okay. Okay. It is perpendicular. EF yes. is perpendicular to A and... Mm -hmm. e. Yes, yes. Yes, AE, same AE, right? Same line. So all these three lines are perpendicular to this one line. Sarah, I just answered your question. 
Sarah, it's page 109. It's page 109 of textbook. Somebody tell her the page number. Okay, 109 of textbook. Okay. So, okay, these three lines are perpendicular to line AE. Okay, now let's move on. Let's move on to this letter, letter F. Who's going to do letter F for me? So again, we can see that there are three lines all together. A, B, C, D, and A, E. These are the three lines, okay? Now give me pairs of perpendicular lines. Who's gonna do this for me? Ahmad Ibrar. Yes? Teacher, A, B is perpendicular to A, C. Good job. Uh, A, C, okay. But we can call it A, E as well. Yeah, A, C, okay. Okay, A, C is fine. Okay, now I wanna give some somebody else a chance, okay? Lower your hand after you have answered. Now, Sara. Yes, Sara? Yes, teacher. Yes. Now tell me the next line. Which other line will you choose? For perpendicular, right? Yes. You have to give me a pair of perpendicular lines. DC is perpendicular to CE. DC is perpendicular to CE. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, is there any other pair? Yes. Okay, which one? BA perpendicular to AC. Yeah, this is, which is the same thing as this. You, are, you have just named it the other way. And also yeah, another... BA perpendicular to AE. Right. Which is the same thing, you know, A, B, A, C is a part of A, E. So I wouldn't count it as another pair. A, C is a, is a part of A, E, right? So it's the same thing, okay? So I think these two pairs, okay? Okay, let's move on to letter H. Okay, let me... Lower your hand and also mute yourself after you have answered. Okay, Ahmad Ibrar. Have I asked you before? Okay, yes. Ahmad Ibrar. Yes. Yes. Uh, who's this sharing screen? Who is this sharing the screen? Thank you. Okay, tell me the pairs of lines which are perpendicular. Ahmad Ibrar. So A B Okay. A B is perpendicular to E F. Good job. Yes. E F. What does this symbol mean? Uh Ahmad? Perpendicular. Perpendicular right. to right. Perpendicular means what does perpendicular mean? Yes, Ahmad. What does perpendicular mean? A point where two lines meet and make a right angle. Right angle. What is a right angle? What is a right angle, Ahmad? Perpendicular. Right angle would be 90 degrees, right? Right? 90 degrees like this, okay? Like this is 90 degrees. So from zero all the way to 90 degrees, that is called right angle and also perpendicular, okay? Okay, good job. Now, somebody else who will, uh, Nabiha. Mm, where are you? Oh, where did you go? Okay, Nabiha. Yes, teacher. Okay, give me the other pair of perpendicular lines. A, E, 
A E and E F. Now, A E is a part of A B. Okay. A E is a part of A B. So I'm not gonna uh, count it as another line. Okay. So okay. Give me, give me a separate. Uh, give me a different line. Um. Dad. Mm. Yes. See how many lines are there? This is one line. This is another line, second line, and this is the third line, right? So we have talked about these. We have talked about these two. Now, what is left? No? C, D is perpendicular to F, E. Yes, which is the same as E, F. Okay, F, E. Okay, good job. Sara, no chatting. No chatting, okay? No chatting. Okay, so is there any question regarding perpendicular or uh, perpendicular lines that, that anybody has problem with? What is this? Uh, uh, who's sharing? Who is sharing a screen? You know, you guys are um, uh, disturbing me. Please do not share. Okay, rename themselves. The screen share off. Mute on entry. Okay. Now I have blocked the screen sharing. Okay. Now tell me, parallel lines. Is there any question regarding perpendicular lines that you might have? Is there any question, any confusion? Anybody wants to ask any question? Yes, Harim. Yes. Yes. Teacher. Yes. In, in the math notebook. Okay. Can you explain me? Um. Can you explain me para, Can you explain me the parallel line? Yes, yes, I am moving on to parallel lines. Yes, do, but do you have any question regarding perpendicular lines? No, in parallel okay. lines, I want to ask on page 109, the question number four. 109, question number four. four. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I just did. It's this, right? 109, question number four. Yes. Yeah, this, I, I just did this. I just did this. And uh, look at these le le letters of the alphabet. How many pairs of perpendicular lines are there in each of them? So I just solved this question. Now this question is only asking the pairs of perpendicular lines, not parallel. But there is no shape. Not either. parallel. Yeah, you have to look at the shape of the letter itself. That's why I wrote down the letter so big, so that it's easier. Okay, so that it's easier. Please, those people who cannot hear me, turn your audio devices. Turn on your audio devices. Turn on your audio devices. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to parallel lines. What are parallel lines? Now, parallel lines are lines that remain the same distance apart, same distance away from each other, and they never meet. Such lines are called parallel lines. For example, I have this line XY and WZ. Now, if I measure the distance between them, let's say, if I measure the distance between them, you can see that it's approximately almost, almost two centimeters. It's two centimeters, okay? And here at this point also, the distance is almost two centimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's two centimeters. Even in the middle, the length is almost two centimeters. Okay? So this is two centimeters. So the distance between the two lines 
stays the same throughout. Mm. The distance between the two mm. lines stays the same throughout. Okay, this is what parallel lines are. And if you continue them, if you extend them on both the sides indefinitely, if you continue them indefinitely on both the sides, they will never meet. Even if you go on extending them beyond this copy, beyond the room, beyond my house, beyond Riyadh, the lines will never meet, okay? They will never meet. That's what parallel lines are, right? Now, what about these two lines that I have drawn here? A, B, and C, D. Right, stay here. Okay. Now, let me extend them and let's see if they meet at any point. Let's see. I have extended them all the way till the end of the page. Let me extend this other line. And now look at them. Are they meeting? Yes, they are meeting here. I made dotted line. Let me extend these. this way and now you can see that they are meeting at this point and you can see that the distance between b and d is only 0.6 centimeters and the distance between a and c is again two centimeters 0.6 and this is two centimeters so you can see that the distance between the two lines is not the same. Here it is greater, the distance between the two lines is greater, and here the distance between the two lines is less. So you can see that the distance between the two lines is not the same. And as a result, they are meeting at some point. Okay, so that is why they are not parallel. And what is the symbol we use for parallel? We, this is the symbol for parallel these two lines. This means parallel. And if they are not parallel, I will cut this, meaning not parallel, or maybe this way. I can cut them this way, okay? Meaning not parallel. And then how will I write this? Line X, Y is parallel to line W, Z. Line X, Y is parallel to line W, Z. By parallel, I mean to say, same distance between the two lines and they do not meet ever, okay? Now, let's look at this pair of lines. P, Q, and R, S. Can you hold this? Now, again, the distance between Q and S is two centimeters almost, and the distance between P and R is one centimeters almost. So you can see that the distance between QS is greater than the distance between P and R. Okay, the distance here is greater than distance between these two points. So that means the distance between the lines is not the same. Okay, now if I extend this line, And I extend this line, zoom out a little. Okay, you can see, zoom out. You can see that these two lines are meeting at this point, right? So if two lines meet at any point, that means they are not parallel. Okay, so, so I, will, I will write PQ is not parallel to RS. Okay, now sometimes they use these symbols, arrows. Same arrows, meaning that this line is parallel to this line. Double arrows, meaning that this particular line is parallel to this line, right? So same symbols, meaning they are parallel. Okay, just like an equilateral triangle, remember? In equilateral triangle, we were using this to say that the three sides are equal. So for parallel, we use arrows, uh, we use arrowheads, okay? 
two arrowheads meaning these two lines are parallel to each other single arrowheads meaning these two lines are parallel to each other now another trick another trick that i will share with you guys is look at these lines a little carefully now you can see that this line is touching this corner of this square and then this corner of this lower square and then a line is joining the two points same is the case here this line is joining this corner of the top square and then the lower left corner of the bottom square and then the line is joining the two corners same is the case with this this corner here joined with this corner here and this corner here is joined with this corner here now when you see that there are only two squares involved uh, when, when i'm talking about for example this is line ab okay this is cd let me not name the lines then it would be e easier so when line ab is involving two boxes and it is joining two corners and the other line is also joining is also involving two boxes and is also joining the two corners and if the distance between them at all the points is equal then that means they are parallel to each other same is the case uh, between line ac and bd line ac and bd they are joining the opposite corners and they are involving the same number of boxes three here and three here okay that means the distance between them would be equal at all points and they are pointing towards the same direction that means they are parallel right okay look at this pair of lines again they are joining this green line is joining the corners of these boxes and this red line is also joining the corners of the boxes that means that they are parallel to each other because both of them are in the same direction and they are not meeting each other they are the same distance apart from each other and they are joining the corners of the squares right that's how a square or a graph paper helps you in determining the perpendicular and parallel lines okay now do, do does anybody have any question regarding parallel and perpendicular lines please do not uh, post unnecessary comments in the chat window the chat window is only for you to communicate with me if you have any question or is, if there is any problem okay no chatting in the chat window otherwise i will disable it uh harim you do not have any question i'm unmuting you yes harim do you have any question regarding parallel lines is no. there any question in the book or the workbook that you want me to solve for you no no okay so should we move on to comparing fractions yes okay okay should we move on to comparing fractions let me know in the chat window okay okay now now we will talk about comparing fractions now i will divide the fractions into three groups okay one is those that those fractions which have the same denominator one is fractions that have the same denominators other group is fraction with the same numerator and then the third group is totally different fractions both the numerators and the denominators are different what is the numerator what is the denominator numerator is the top number top above the fraction bar this is the fraction bar i hope you guys know this by now but just to recap okay this is a top number above the fraction bar called numerator and denominator is the bottom number which is below the fraction bar right okay now also we already know and i hope everybody attending this class must already be knowing 
that the bottom number or the denominator is the total number of sections or total number of parts that, okay, in the figure or whatever we are considering. The top number or the numerator is the number of parts out of that total, okay? Like for example, uh, if I shade one, because one over four, then four is the total number, okay? And one is the shaded part. Uh, for what I am observing that you are the one uh, using the chat window unnecessarily. Okay, I do not appreciate unnecessary messages in the chat window, okay? So um, the numerator, what is one that means only one section out of four would be shaded right this is two over four so again denominator is the same that means the total number of parts is the same which is four but the numerator will be my number of shaded boxes now this is so easy i mean just by looking at the figures we can very well Yes, the numerator is the shaded part. No, the numerator is only the shaded part, okay? The denominator is the total number of parts. Total number of parts is four, right? One, two, three, four. So I have four, okay? And numerator is the number of shaded parts. So only one is shaded, so one is the numerator. Here, the numerator is two, so I shaded two boxes. So two over four, right? Now this is so easy. Which, which of the two figures has a bigger shaded area? Which of the two figures has a bigger shaded area? One over four or two over four? Which has a bigger shaded area? One over four or two over four? Lean oval, tap four. Uh, would you mind answering? Okay, let me unmute you. Yes? Lean over. Hello? Uh, Lean over, tap four. You are unmuted. Okay, I, I have to remove a few people. I do not appreciate music going on in the background. And then, you know, you're using chat window for all the wrong purposes. I will remove such, uh, such par participants from the meeting. One more unnecessary comment and that person will be out. Yes, two over four has a larger area. Right, so that means two over four is greater than one over four, okay? Now, what about this? Two over six and three over six. Two over six and three over six. So again, six is my bottom number denominator. So total number of fractions, total number of sections is six. And then we have two shaded only. Okay, I have to. Okay, two over six. Okay, and this is three over six. So now, which is a greater shaded area? Which one, by looking at the figure, which one has a greater shaded area? Instead of using the chat window for all the unnecessary comments, please use it for the answers. Yes, Fatima. Yes, please go ahead. Fatima. Yes, Fatima. Right one. Right one. Right. Yes, right one. Do not share your screen, please. I can see somebody's camera open. I can see somebody's camera is open. Okay, thank you. Now, the same numerator. Now, what happens when you have the same numerator, but different denominators? But different denominators. Now, two over four, again, four is the total number of parts. 
and then two is the numerator so i will shade two boxes okay now this is two over six so that means the total number of parts is six one two three four five six but only two and and excuse my drawing my my parts are not exactly equal but i hope you get the idea you get the point so now which one is a greater shaded area which one is a greater shaded area in this case which one is a greater shaded area yes zoya which one is a greater shaded area greater which one two over four right this is a greater shaded area so did you notice that when the denominator is smaller the overall fraction has a greater value right the shaded area is bigger when the denominator is smaller the shaded area is bigger okay did you did you appreciate that yes yes now why is that why is that because when you have a bigger denominator you are dividing the same area into more parts more parts meaning each part will be smaller okay therefore bigger the denominator smaller the shaded area bigger the denominator smaller the shaded area so remember when the numerators are same you will look at for the greater fraction you will go for smaller denominator because a smaller denominator would mean greater shaded area okay now let's look at another example this is 4 over 8 and 4 over 10 so now we can see that the numerators are the same but the denominators are different okay 4 and uh, in this in this 4 over 10 the denominator is 10 so that means i have 10 sections i have 10 sections okay fatima fatima where are you yes fatima yes teacher i did not understand that we have it is and yes yes okay okay it's fine okay now you do this with me okay now okay. Uh, uh okay let's do this four over ten right so what does that mean ten is the denominator so that means we have total number of how many boxes ten what 10 10 right and then the numerator is 4 that means how many shaded boxes out of these four four so let me shade four boxes for you right now four boxes are shaded right now what what should i do here now what is the total number of boxes here eight eight eight, eight. exactly and the numerator is four right so how many boxes should i shade right so let me write okay which one is now greater which one is greater yeah which which shaded area is bigger for it yes this is a greater shaded area as compared to this this is a smaller can you see it is only till here and this is can you see this so, is a smaller for small line when we will put big line it will be greater and for the big line when we will put big it will be greater see when you have when you have a greater denominator what are you doing you are dividing the same thing into smaller pieces okay for example let me give you another example for example you got a pizza okay okay, okay. you got a pizza but there are four people mm -hmm. in your family okay there are four people in your family mm -hmm. each person will get one piece so i will divide the pizza this way right so you okay. will get one your brother will get one your parents 
your mother and your father, right? Now, if somebody's, somebody has six children, let's suppose, and then the parents, so six plus two, eight. Now, they also got the same pizza. They also got the same pizza, but now they have to divide into 12 parts. Right? So 12 parts. So how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Right? Now, in that family, one person will get only this. Whereas you got this. So who got more? Uh, you? Uh, four. You. Me. Right. Right. So you got more. So uh, did you see the fraction here is one over four because the total number of parts was four and you got one. And here the total number of parts is 12. And this person also got, you know, one over 12. Right. So now this is greater because the number of parts was less. So the greater the number of parts you divide something in, the smaller each piece gets. The smaller each piece gets. So the smaller is the shaded area. Did you understand? Yeah, thank you, teacher. Did you understand? Yes, I am. Okay, good job, alhamdulillah. You're most welcome. Okay, now what about different fractions? when the top numbers are different and when the bottom numbers are also different. Now, how do we compare such fractions? Now, we cannot compare fractions which have different top and bottom numbers, okay? We have to have one thing common. Either the numerator should be common or the denominator should be common. Okay, Lenovo, I removed you. Uh, I, you know what, I think I'll have to uh, bring more changes to my settings. You won't be allowed to enter without my permission. I do not appreciate your smiley faces in the chat window. Please stop doing that. Okay, so different fractions. Uh, so what we do is that we uh, try to bring them to something which is common, you know. So what we usually do is that we keep the denominators common we bring the de denominators common now for that to bring to make the denominators same what we do is that we will uh, look for a number which is in the table of 5 as well as 8 okay we will we will think of a number which is in the table of 5 as well as in the table of 8 Right, so can you think of any number? Now let's, because five is an easier number, it's a smaller number, let's go through the table of five and then let's see if we come across a number which is also in the table of eight. Let's see, five ones are five, no. Uh, five twos are 10, no. Five threes are 15. These numbers cannot come in the table of eight. These numbers cannot, because they are smaller than, no, not then, the, they're not smaller. But yeah, they are not uh, divisible by eight, okay? Five ones are five, twos are 10, five threes are 15, five fours are 20. 20 also uh, is not in the table of eight. 20, uh, five fours are 20, five fives are 25, five six are 30, five eights are 40, right? 40 comes in the table of eight, okay? 40 is in the table of eight. Or an easier way is there is another easier way you multiply this number by this 5 into 8 and you multiply this by 5 okay you multiply 5 by 8 you multiply this number by this and this number by this multiply them and so what and and then remember you will multiply the numerator as well with the same number as you have multiplied the denominator. So if I am multiplying denominator by five, I have to multiply the numerator also by five. Here, I multiplied the denominator by eight, 
So I have to multiply the numerator also by 8. Now tell me, 3 fives are? Okay. Uh, okay, Afia. Yes, Afia. Tell me, three fives are? 15. 15, good job. And eight fives are? 40. 40, right. Okay. Now somebody else. Okay, you, you, you tell me. Uh, four eights are? Afia. Thirty-two. Four eights are? Thirty-two. Good job. And five eights are? Forty. Forty. Now, that means the total number of parts is the same. Remember, the denominator is the total number of parts, but the numerators are different. And which numerator is greater? 32 or 15? Which, 32. Right. 32 is greater. So that means 32 parts out of 40 are shaded. So 32, are, oh, 32 parts out of 40 is a greater fraction compared to 15 over 40. Did you understand, Afia? Yes, teacher. No? Yes. Okay, okay. Let's do one or two more questions. Moaz, I think you also want to be removed. Okay, Sarah, I'll ask you. But let me just... Okay, where is this comparing fractions chapter? Which page number is this? Comparing fractions is, so is page 69, 69, page 69. If there is any question you have problem in, please let me know and I'll do it together with you. If there's any question you want to ask, then please let me know. Okay, uh, Sara. Okay, let me ask. Okay, Sara. Yes, teacher. Yes. Which fraction is a smaller? Three over four or five over six? Five over six is smaller. Why? Because. Yes. Because if because if there is a pizza and and there are only six parts and there are also six people each each person will get a smaller part right smaller part. right good job yes i like your explanation right see so now denominator is the total number of parts, right? So I divided this into four parts, right? And then numerator, which is the top number, is the number of shaded parts, so three, right? Here, the total number of parts is six. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then five will be shaded, right? So now you can see which one is a greater shaded area. This whole thing is shaded. Here, this is shaded. So now, what is, which one is a greater shaded area? It is this, right? It is five over six. So three over four is a smaller. Three over four is a smaller. What does this symbol mean? This symbol is like a hungry mouth, which is open towards the greater number, which is open towards the greater fraction. Right. Now, uh, is there any question you want me to do? We are out of time. It's 4.53. Yes, Harim? Harim? Harim, I have unmuted you. Uh, who is this sharing the screen? 
who is this? Okay, which of these now, you know, if you guys want to chat with each other, if you guys want to talk to each other, you can very well do that uh, by calling each other. Don't use these classes for communicating with each other. Okay, which of these fractions are greater than uh, one over two? So we will compare all the fractions with one over two, okay? So which of these fractions, I'm doing this question number two of page 69. Okay, which of these fractions are greater than one over two? Put a tick in the box. So one over two, I wrote down one over two, and then I have taken this fraction three over seven, and now let's do this again. I mean, let's do this together. Okay, Fatima, you have problem in this? Okay, Fatima, I'm unmuting you. And after this question, we will end the class. Yes, Fatima. Yeah, teacher, that I did, I'm talking about the up one, the pizza. You told me that the blessed tell us, shall I the less that you will got the pieces. We will, we will make a crocodile face to that. Then why you face to the five to six? Yeah, that's a good question. Let me see. Yeah, because, hmm, yeah, you, okay, let, let's just calculate it and let's see. Because, you know, by the picture, I can see that the shaded area in this case is greater. But let's calculate it together, okay? Good job for pointing this out to me. Now I know four threes are 12, so six twos are 12. So now I have a three threes are nine over 12 and five twos are 10 over 12. Did you see how I did that? So yes, it yes. is five over six, which is greater. Yes, you are right. This is, you know, this is a uh, divided into greater number but the number of pieces is so much the number of pieces is so much that altogether the shaded area is getting greater than the shaded area in this in here okay so uh did you see how i did this yes how how did i do the, do it can you explain me how did i do this can you, you do it you did you did five. See, I I chose a number which is coming in both these tables. Six twos are twelve and four threes are twelve. Six twos are twelve or four threes are twelve. Or I can do it another way if you're finding this confusing. I can do it this way. I can do this as well. I can multiply six by four and four by six. So I'll get the same denominator, six by four and four by six, okay? But whatever I'm doing to the denominator, I have to do the same thing with the numerator as well. So if I'm multiplying six by four, I have to multiply the numerator also by the same number, both the sides, because here I am multiplying the denominator by four, I have to multiply the numerator also by four. So three six are, 18, four six are 24, five fours are 20, and six fours are 24. So now I have the same denominator and I can easily compare the numerator. So this is greater. This is a greater. That means this original fraction, five over six is greater. Okay? So it is, okay. it is, yeah, it is because of such a big number, you know, all they shaded all the parts and left only one. So because of that, the overall shaded area got bigger. But usually, usually, the greater the denominator, the smaller the whole fraction. Yes, you are right. This was an exception. I mean, here mm -hmm. they included all the parts. That's why we got this. Fatima, Jazakallah, Karen, for pointing this out to me. Okay, Karen. 
Okay, Harim, uh, let's do one last question with you. Uh, where are you? Where is Harim? Yes, Harim? Okay, let's do this together. How, how will you compare the two fractions? One over two and three over seven. Harim, I'm waiting for you. Harim, you are unmuted. What? Yes, Vita, I'm waiting for you. How, how will you compare these two fractions? You don't want to do? Okay. Okay. Uh, Fawad. Yes, Fawad? Fawad? Okay, Sara, you. Uh, Teacher, can I tell? Okay, okay, go ahead, Fawad. Three, seven. Yeah, how will I compare to, uh, compare the two? Tell me. Both the numerators and the denominators are different. So I want something common, right? So can I make these denominators the same and how can I do that? Multiply two by seven. Okay. And then? Seven by two. Good job. Then, next step. Yes? Um. Okay, let me ask Sara, okay? Okay, Sara. You can you continue from here? Yes. Teacher, I can't see your video. Oh no, I can. Okay. Okay, now tell me what should be my next step. You have to multiply uh, the numerator also with two. Good job. And. Come on, come on, come on. Batati jau, batati jau, batati jau. And then, uh, and you also, and in the first one, you have, yes. you also have, and the numerator will also be multiplied with seven. Good job. Now, so now what do I have now? Now, of, uh, now, now, one and two is multiplied with seven by seven, and your answer will be a, a seven by fourteen. Good job, very good. Okay. And and now th three by seven is multiplied by two by two, and so the answer is six by fourteen. Good job. So now tell me which one is greater. When the denominators are same, the greatest fraction is the one with the greatest number and the great uh, with the greatest numerator. And the greatest numerator is seven. Seven is the greatest one and six and greatest six. Three by greater. Yes, yes. So yeah, you will say that when the denominators are the same, then the the fraction with the greater numerator will be the greater fraction, right? The numerator, which is greater, I mean, the fraction with the greater numerator will be the greater fraction, right? Greater. When you are comparing only two fraction, you will use er. Otherwise, then uh, if you're comparing more than two, then you can use greatest, okay? Okay, so uh, we are out of time. Okay, Moaz. Yes, Moaz, you're unmuted. <laughs> Hello, Moaz? Uh, and teacher, can you tell me the first uh, the first one which uh, the we started I came late. 
beta i am recording my class you can listen to the recording okay okay yes and why are you sending so many faces in the chat window please don't do that okay okay don't do that okay okay uh so that's it uh sara yes you answered right okay so that's it is there any question afia did you understand afia teacher can i ask you something yes yes sure what are intersecting lines yes intersecting means crossing each other okay crossing each other for example this line is crossing this line so intersecting is just a fancy word for crossing it just means crossing like the, the, this is the cross right so this is the intersection okay i understand thank you teacher yeah this is easy this is written in your book as well intersection meaning crossing lines it is there here intersect means meet or cross each other page 107 okay any other question okay okay assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh